There was a time when almost everyone thought Chrysler was down for the count. Now we're back on top again. You'll hear people say that Detroit has seen its best days too. Don't you believe them? Just like the people at Chrysler, Detroiters have guts and a willingness to work to make this city's future even greater than its past. I guarantee you won't find a better place to do business. Detroit means business, all right. As the automotive capital of the world, the city is home to the world's largest single industry. But Detroit is more than the Motor City. It's a great manufacturing center as well, with the skill, know-how, and resources to produce everything from business machines to food products. As the nation's largest producer of business and industrial film and video discs, Detroit is often called the Hollywood of the Midwest. The Detroit area ranks fourth among major cities in total economic activity. And with more than 2,500 manufacturing firms in the area, there are tremendous opportunities for marketing all kinds of goods and services for consumers as well as for industry. Detroit is a leading banking center as well, with assets in excess of $35 billion. Convention and tourism are big business in Detroit, in fact, our second largest industry. Thanks to outstanding convention facilities, Detroit draws more convention business than such glamour spots as Las Vegas and Miami, and expanding facilities will meet future needs. The symbol for Detroit's remarkable rebirth towers over the riverfront. It's appropriately called Renaissance Center. Its gleaming 73-story Westin Hotel, the tallest in the world, and six office towers represent a $427 million investment in Detroit's future. The development of Renaissance Center was conceived and spearheaded by Henry Ford II, who convinced 51 major companies to join with him in constructing one of the largest private commercial developments in the United States. Adjacent to the Renaissance Center is Hart Plaza, designed by Isamu Noguchi. It's a people-oriented attraction that draws millions of visitors each year. Detroit's rebirth could only have happened through the cooperative efforts of business, labor, government, and community leaders. And there had to be a strong and sure guiding hand. The mayor of Detroit, Coleman A. Young. We in Detroit recognized a long time ago that if we are to prosper in the future, government and business cannot afford to look upon each other as adversaries. Therefore, as mayor, I've made my commitment to bring the private sector, business and labor, into a partnership with government in order to guarantee our mutual future growth and prosperity. Our major role in this partnership is to provide the proper atmosphere for doing business. That means cutting through the red tape, providing financial leverage, technical assistance, whatever it takes to get the job done. Our cooperative efforts have produced dramatic changes in Detroit. Renaissance Center, Hart Plaza, the Joe Louis Arena, the Riverfront Apartments, the new General Motors Assembly Plant, and the Milner Center, just to name a few. No other city tries harder. Take it from me, Detroit means business. Prominent area businessmen are committed to moving Detroit forward. Detroit Renaissance Board Chairman Max Fisher. In 1970, 26 community leaders got together with the mayor and the governor to form what is called the Detroit Renaissance, an organization devoted to revitalizing the economic sector of the city of Detroit. I was proud to be picked as the chairman of that group. With the city's most powerful public and private leaders at its helm, Detroit Renaissance acts as a catalyst in Detroit's physical and economic revitalization, recommending priorities for development and attracting investment capital. Through the production of such major international events as the Detroit Grand Prix, Detroit Renaissance works to improve both Detroit's image and its quality of life. Our success speaks well for the effort that we've put forth to date and also speaks well for a sound economic future for the city of Detroit. Helping to ensure that sound economic future is the Detroit Economic Growth Corporation. 
Having already helped over 1,000 firms, their board reads like a who's who of Detroit's nationally known and respected business, labor, and government leaders. The chairman, who also serves as board chairman and chief executive officer of Detroit Edison, is Walter McCarthy. Several years ago, Mary Young established the Detroit Economic Growth Corporation, a private, non-profit organization formed to help business locate or expand or improve their facilities in our city. It's a real economic assistance organization, a one-stop service agency for companies both large and small, for those already in the city, and for others who are interested in locating here. The Growth Corporation represents an effective and especially an active coalition of business and labor and government leaders. We also act as liaison with government agencies which help these businesses in other ways. The Detroit Economic Growth Corporation is linked directly with the city's two quasi-public development agencies, the Economic Development Corporation and the Downtown Development Authority. Together we act as extensions of the city's official development arm the Detroit Community and Economic Development Department. This department coordinates all the legal, financial, regulatory, and other development responsibilities related to Detroit's revitalization. We at the Community and Economic Development Department have the manpower, the expertise, and together with Mayor Young and the other city departments and agencies, believe me, we got a lot of clout in this town. When businesses are looking or need help locating or expanding or modernizing, or even diversifying, they could find it here in Detroit. Believe me, you can count on us. One of the companies deeply involved in the development of Detroit is Cleveland-based Forest City Dillon, which has, over the last several years, built numerous high-rise apartments throughout the city. Encouraged by their previous success in Detroit, they have teamed with local developer Henry Haygood in the construction of the $71 million Millinder Center Complex. The vice president of Forest City, Dillon, is Ronald Ratner. Our company is a major developer of real estate on a national level. In the case of this particular project, we chose to develop a building in the city of Detroit. And we did so for a number of reasons. First of all, of course, we reviewed the normal economic considerations that you would in undertaking any major project. But then the, the catalyst that really got us going on this specific building in Detroit was the fact that we felt we could create a true partnership with the city and that the city had the talent and the skills and the willingness to really carry forth their end of that bargain. Located across the street from the Tunnel to Canada, Millinder Center is designed to contain luxury apartments, a full-service health club, an Omni International Hotel, retail shops, restaurants, office space, and a parking structure. In addition to glass skywalks linking it to the Renaissance Center and the City County Building, Millinder Center houses one of the 13 stations along the nearly three-mile route of the new downtown People Mover, which is currently under construction. An elevated rapid transit system, the People Mover encircles the entire central business district, putting every major office, hotel, convention, and entertainment facility within minutes of each other. Situated within the People Mover Loop, in the heart of Detroit's colorful Greek town, is Trapper's Alley, a multi-million dollar renovation of a century-old structure built during the city's fur trading days. This five-story development will provide a unique blend of restaurants, specialty shops, and entertainment. A local partner with Baltimore-based Cordish Embry Associates, developers of Trapper's Alley, is Esther Edwards. Well, Trapper's Alley represented a tremendous opportunity to creatively recycle and historic treasure into something that was really unique and exciting. There are a lot of other historic buildings in Detroit that offer the same potential for redevelopment. All it's gonna take is a little money and imagination to really make it work. The Detroit River is a beautiful and valuable amenity, and several major developers are taking advantage of its great potential. Gracing the skyline just west of the Renaissance Center is the new multi-million dollar luxury community known as Riverfront. Providing a spectacular view of Detroit and neighboring Canada, Riverfront contains over 500 luxury apartments, a three-level health club, a marina, and a private parking structure. It was developed by financier and industrialist Max Fisher in partnership with internationally known developer A. Alfred Taubman. Involved in, because it's been a long-term project, and as everyone has said, it's been, it's been a, a project of cooperation uh, there were so many things against this project in terms of the economy, 
the kind of project, uh, uh, all the problems involved, but the people in this community and the people even nationally made the decision that this project ought to happen. Inspired by developments along the Detroit River, American Natural Resources, in partnership with Michigan Consolidated Gas, has plans underway to develop Harbor Tom, transforming 48 acres of riverfront property into high-rise apartments, townhouses, and a large shopping center. Immediately to the west of Harbor Town is the new Stroh Corporate Headquarters. Board Chairman and Chief Executive Officer Peter Stroh. In recent years, our company's been expanding through acquisitions. This meant, of course, that we would need larger corporate offices. We were able to purchase the former Park Davis property with 15 fine old red brick buildings. We are now turning these into a multi-use complex we call River Place. We've had a lot of help from the city, which has included the implementation of zoning changes, the processing of an urban development action grant, locating sources of financing, and obtaining historic site designation. River Place will contain not only the Stroh headquarters, but office buildings, retail space, public plazas, and parking decks. Linking all of the riverfront developments will be a series of public walkways, bicycle paths, and uniquely designed parks, such as the newly completed Chain Park, one of many being built along the riverfront. Detroit's renaissance extends well beyond the central business district. A few minutes north of downtown is Detroit's new center area, home of both General Motors and Burroughs World Headquarters. Directly between the world-class St. Regis Hotel and the famous Fisher Building is New Center One, a $55 million complex built by General Motors and the Canadian-based Trizac Corporation. The New Center One building includes six stories of deluxe office space above two levels of shops and restaurants with connecting skywalks to General Motors and the Fisher Building. One of the many neighborhood developments in the area is historic New Center Commons. Spearheaded by General Motors, the New Center Development Partnership, which involves many local corporations, is investing millions of dollars in Detroit's neighborhood revitalization. Just to the west of New Center Commons is Virginia Park, another community undergoing dramatic change with the construction of hundreds of housing units, a shopping center, and a community center as well. New housing and new neighborhoods are just part of the brighter economic picture for Detroit. James Blanchard, governor of the state of Michigan. Since I became governor, thousands of new permanent jobs have been created in the state of Michigan. And we promoted a business climate that's making it easier and less costly to do business here in our state. Now we're working to improve that climate even more. The city of Detroit and the state of Michigan are a partnership. And together, we mean business. There is no better example of what can be done to create jobs and assist industry than the 425-acre Central Industrial Park Project, home of General Motors' new showcase assembly plant, designed to be the most automated, the most innovative in the world. GM built this one-of-a-kind, three-million-square-foot facility right in the heart of Detroit because the city put together a remarkable development package, coordinating the efforts of some 60 local, state, and federal agencies, all in only 18 months. Roger Smith, board chairman and chief executive officer of General Motors. Well, I think Detroit's handling of the Central Industrial Park project was really superb. They brought together literally hundreds of the little agencies, communities, all involved, all the people from the various parts of government, did it all together, well coordinated. They did it on time and did it within their budget. And I guess that's the thing that appeals to me as a businessman, to see a city government that can really deliver. The new General Motors plant is designed to implement the just-in-time method of manufacturing, a quick delivery system by which parts are produced by the suppliers and arrive in sequence or small lot sizes as needed for assembly. Because warehousing is drastically reduced, GM works directly with its suppliers at all stages of production to deal with problems as they arise. One of the many companies finding it profitable to locate in the center of this growing industrial activity is Bing Steel. Dave Bing, president. I have a plant that processes steel just a few miles from the new GM plant. And even though I supply GM now, when I found I could locate across the street from this new facility, I decided to do just that. I figured I'd have an advantage as a just-in-time supplier if I were that close. 
I expect over a period of time that the whole area around the plant will be bought up and developed. And the city is bending over backwards to help businesses get the kind of financial assistance that will make such a thing possible. I know that from personal experience. For these reasons, moving across the street from the new General Motors plant was ideal for me. Besides, Ford and Chrysler are switching over to just in time. So with about 50 manufacturing facilities, including 12 assembly plants within 30 minutes to an hour of this location, and with Detroit being at the hub of the best freeway system in the Midwest, really, a supplier couldn't do better than to move in here. Within just 500 miles of Detroit is about half of the nation's population and more than half of its disposable income. This five-state region alone accounts for more than one-fourth of the nation's manufacturing, shipments, and employment. Extend just 500 miles into neighboring Canada and you're within an area that accounts for 65% of that country's gross national product. Detroit's superb transportation network is unequaled in its ability to bring in raw materials and manufacturing components and distribute the finished products throughout the United States, Canada, and the world. As the automotive capital, Detroit has designed and built the finest freeway system in the world, consisting of six toll-free routes. Nearly half of the nation's businesses can be reached by truck within 24 hours, and there are 46 motor freight companies in the city to get the job done. Detroit's rail service is also exceptional, with six major lines strategically located throughout the city's industrial corridors and along the riverfront. Four major airports are within the Detroit area, including Detroit Metropolitan, a major international airport, and Detroit City Airport, located in the heart of the industrial corridor. The Detroit River is one of the busiest inland waterways in the world, with connections to more than 200 international ports. And only the Port of Detroit offers three alternatives for international shipping. The St. Lawrence Seaway, the Canadian Land Bridge to Halifax, and direct rail to east, west, and Gulf Coast ports. A general foreign trade zone has been established at the port, making it more profitable for companies to manufacture, assemble, or warehouse goods in the United States by allowing firms to defer or often avoid duty payments. Superb transportation is just one of Detroit's major resources. Plenty of dependable energy is another of the city's strong suits. Unlike many other cities, Detroit has never had a brownout. The city's ample supply of electricity more than meets the demands of business today and will continue to do so in the future. Detroit Edison, the city's electric power supplier, has a brand new generating unit already in service and two others nearing completion. Detroit has also never had a shortage of another valuable resource, natural gas. American Natural Resources, headquartered in Detroit, has 12,000 miles of pipeline and one of the best supplies in the nation. And newly found natural gas reserves in Upper Michigan make near-term supplies even more optimistic. Detroit is located near the world's largest supply of fresh water, which can be purchased more cheaply and used more abundantly than anywhere else in the world. But the city's number one resource is people, skilled people. Together, they make up one of the most technically advanced labor pools in the world. Former president of the United Auto Workers, Doug Fraser. Detroit has a talented and skilled workforce that can adapt to any sort of product line. It's an innovative workforce. And it's a workforce that is noted for its high level of productivity. Increased productivity in our industries in Detroit far exceed the national average and have for the last two decades. In relationship with management, I think both sides have learned to compromise. And, uh, we've had a lot of adversity in this community in the last few years, but that adversity has taught us to look at the other side's point of view. We understand uh, the company's problems and uh, they understand ours better than we ever have in the past. With a multitude of outstanding educational and technical training institutions in and around Detroit, the city's labor force will continue to have the skills and know-how to meet future business needs. Within an hour and a half's drive of Detroit are 15 junior and community colleges, as well as 19 major universities and colleges, including Wayne State University, Michigan State University, 
and the University of Michigan ranked among the nation's top 10 schools. And five state-of-the-art vocational and technical schools are located right in the heart of the city. Detroit also means business in medical technology. Its reputation is known worldwide. In the center of the city, affiliated with the Wayne State University Medical School, is the 230-acre Detroit Medical Center, where just about every possible form of medical treatment and major breakthroughs in medical research are ongoing. And Detroit is a leader in high-tech growth industries, especially when it comes to computerized applications for manufacturing, telecommunications, and industrial automation, such as assembly line robotics. Detroit is the home of Burroughs Corporation, a world leader in the data processing and information systems industry. A growing company with sales in excess of $4 billion, Burroughs is in the process of a major expansion. Michael Blumenthal, chairman of the board and chief executive officer. The Burroughs Corporation has had its headquarters in Detroit for 79 years, since 1905. And we have grown and prospered uh, as the city has grown. Just recently, we made a decision to build a major new office complex here, spending as much as $40 million and probably adding about 1,000 new jobs to this area. We've done so for a very simple reason. We like it here. We like the location, the proximity next to the major educational institutions of the state, we like the excellent qualified labor force that we've been getting here. We like the cooperation from the city and from the state authorities who understand business. Uh, and generally speaking, this area has been and continues to be good to us. I think we could spot business trends at Burroughs, and we have spotted the trend toward Detroit. It's a good place to be. Detroit is ready for growth, and so are its people, who enjoy living in a city blessed with a wide variety of beautiful neighborhoods. Affordable prices are one reason why a vast majority of Detroiters own their own homes. Detroit is a great city to work and live in, a great city to take pleasure in as well. Whether it's listening to a world-class symphony or the vibrant city sounds of jazz, whether it's elegant dining in a downtown night spot or fishing for your own dinner on a lazy afternoon, whether it's cheering your hometown team to a World Series victory or contemplating great artwork from across the world, Detroit's got it all. Time, nighttime, any time at all, for the best of everything, do it in Detroit.